So Lucas, Final Fantasy VIII, thoughts? It's better than Final Fantasy VII, I said it. Ooh, hot takes coming out on this channel. In the intersecting spheres of gaming and technology, the Final Fantasy series is well known for pushing the technical boundaries of whatever console they happen to appear on. For example, consider the game Final Fantasy VIII, in which the main character wears a fur-lined jacket purely to flex on the rest of the industry. So of course, Cole, you're talking about Squall. Yes, I am. Squall Leon Hart, uh, who in the games is described as a young, aloof mercenary talented in the art of war and sandbagging questions with an almost heroic amount of indifference. Is, like, is it whatever he says? Is that the line? Whatever, yeah. And is it you who told me that he doesn't actually say whatever in the Japanese version? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what he says, but apparently there was a bit of issue with translation. He basically comes off okay. very sarcastic um, and like slightly charismatic uh, it, yeah. in the Japanese one, whereas in like English and American version, it's just, yeah, whatever. Yeah, he seems really cold and indifferent to the point where it's just a meme about the character. Where it's just like, whatever. Because he says it, I think, after, like, uh, Renoa says that she loves him or something. <laughs> He's like, whatever. But in like, the Japanese version, like Lucas said, it's supposed to be, it's, it's more sarcastic. And, like, you know, it adds a bit more layer of characterization to him. But they kind of just fumbled that in the, like, you know, the English translation. And he just comes across like an asshole because he's just... Whatever. And at the start of this video, Lucas, you came in with the hottest of hot takes, and the comment section is probably all kinds of mad about it already. So fuck it. Final Fantasy VIII, I think, is better than Final Fantasy VII as well. I played both games once when they came out, and again as an adult, so I can look back, you know, with that, like, you know, critical, like, you know, more refined eye, and I still think that eight is the better game. But I can see why some would argue that seven is the better game. And in specific regards to what we're talking about today, like, you know, just the graphical achievements that Final Fantasy like, you know, eight achieve, like can you believe that 8 and 7 came out on the same console? I can't. And I remember back in the day with Final Fantasy 8, obviously, you know, 7 looked all right for the time, but then 8, I watched that opening cutscene just on loop because I of think, how good the cutscenes were in that game. And I contend that some of the graphics in that game hold up today, or like, you know, 20 fucking years later, like the panning shot over the field of flowers. Oh, the one where it's um, the feather goes into the air and then turns into the gun blade. Those two shots like always stick out in my mind as long as they could like with a bit more polish, they could go in a game today and no one would bat an eye. Before we move on, Lucas, what are your thoughts on the junction in system? Because to my knowledge, that is the most uh, controversial aspect of the game. It's the part that people point to as the biggest, like, you know, flaw in Final Fantasy VIII, and I actually think it works super well. I don't particularly know that? whether it does work super well or whether it's because I'm used to it. I personally okay. don't see a massive issue with it going back, but again, I think to a new player coming in with, like, fresh eyes now, it is a bit of a backward system. It is, but I've always found it, like, really cool that so people don't know what we're talking about. Like in that game, I, I think in Final Fantasy VII, it's Materia, which is very simple. It's like, oh, put Materia in your weapons and equipment and it gives you abilities. So you put fire on your sword, you can now cast fire. In Final Fantasy VIII, it's a bit different. You have to draw magic from monsters and then you junction magic to your stats. So your stats are related to the magic that you use. And that seems really like complicated, but I love that since it adds so much depth where like, if you junction, for example, fire to strength, it goes up more than if you junction, like, cure to strength. Because obviously, fire, strength, and then obviously the, the best spell for strength stuff like earthquake and tornado. And then, like, inversely for speed, you, like, you know, junction triple to it, and that gets you more speed. And then you can have, like, the status effects of, okay, junction bio to one of your status effects, and now you, like, your physical attacks, like, do poison damage. Or you can do, like, junction fire to your defensive, and now you take less damage from fire. And I found that really fucking cool, and I liked messing around with like the different setups you could get before I realised, like, oh yeah, you can just min-max the shit out of it. And when I realised the best way to play that game is run away from every encounter, because enemies scale with your yeah. level. And it's also more optimal to just constantly be at low health, so you can just do Renzo Kuken every, like, in every battle, and just end every fight with one hit. But I contend, though, is the Renzo Kuken one of the coolest limit breaks in Final Fantasy? Most definitely. I think the only one, the only one 
that I like, even like comes close to it, like, you know, except for like, you know, the end game ones of like, um, uh, like Omni Slash is the Banishing Blade, I think it's called in Final Fantasy X, where Oren just does the get the fuck out and baseball bats an enemy out of the ring. Uh, uh, hey. Ooh. Get the fuck out! Now, Carl, we can't talk about Final Fantasy VIII okay. without mentioning the fucking gun blade. Oh, God, the gun blade. So, if you've not played the game, or you don't know, the gun blade is exactly what it sounds like. It's a gun sword. And there's a picture of it behind me, and it is literally just a revolver, but instead of, like, a barrel, it just has a giant sword on the end. And people tend to fall into one of two camps, of either it's stupid or it's awesome. And I was like a member of the former until I learned how it worked, and now I think it's kind of cool. So do you know the actual mechanics be like, behind the gun blade in like, you know, the series? Um, I think you've mentioned it to me before, but I've only got a vague remembrance of how it works. So you go ahead. Okay, well the idea is that you pull the trigger, because it's an actual working gun. You pull the trigger when you're halfway through slashing an enemy, and then that causes an explosion which rattles the blade, causing extra damage. <laughs> Which is so stupid, I kind of love it. And then in the game, it means that every time you slash an enemy, you have to pull, I think it's R1, at the exact right time to pull the trigger. And you do that in game, and then you just get a big explosion along with your slash. And it's so hilariously stupid, I kind of love it. You say that people fall into one of either camp. And yes. I think I fall straight down the middle of, it's fucking stupid, but I love it, it's awesome. So before we move on, Lucas, favourite Final Fantasy weapon? Okay, now I'm going to be controversial, and although I do love like okay. the Buster Blade and the Gun Blade, I've mm -hmm. got to give props to people like Zell and Tifa that just punch their way through that fucking fight. That's the correct fucking answer, <laughs> because that goes all the way back to I think, is it in Final Fantasy V with Sabin, who suplexes a train. Oh yeah, I forgot. Who suplexes yeah. a train. That is also a ghost. And they know how dumb that is because they every subsequent game where you have like the punch fighter, like you have your Tifa, you have your Zell, they always give them the most ridiculously over the top moves. In Final Fantasy VIII, the topic of today's video, like the punch character in that, Zell, who Lucas just mentioned, like has potentially one of the most hilariously dumb looking um, uh, limit breaks ever, which is where he runs all the way around the world and punches you. <laughs> But he's just a kid in a school for like, you know, albeit for mercenaries. And he's like, oh yeah, Zell, what are you going to do to this enemy? I'm going to run all the way around the world and punch it. And my love of punch characters comes directly from Tifa. You know, in the previous game in the series, just because of that one move she has, where she uppercuts you and it summons a dolphin. <laughs> Which is so good. And I want to give like big fucking props right now to Death Battle. Oh yeah. And do, Luke, do you know why I'm giving him props? Uh, I mean, not specifically, but I do love Death Battle. It's the fight they have between is it Yang from Ruby and Tifa from Street Fighter. And in that fight, they have the moment. That I think it's one of the hypest things I've ever seen in a YouTube video where Tifa does her limit break. So Tifa does her limit break. It's, like it's the first time we've seen it rendered in 3D, but obviously before like Final Fantasy fucking remake came out. And she does the full thing, and they play the stock dolphin animation noise other as she does the uppercut. <laughs> so to bring it back to Final Fantasy VIII and Squall specifically, like, as dumb as his weapon is, it's kind of overshadowed by just the pimp-ass leather bomber jacket that he wears. Would you agree? It's so Because cool. it's so fu- And it's become like more iconic to his character than the fucking weapon that he wields. Which is rare for a Final Fantasy game, isn't it? Where it's usually... Especially like, for Final Fantasy, yeah. Right, Cloud's most iconic feature is the fact he's... Like, the Buster Blade. Like, without the Buster Blade, he's just a generic anime man. But with the squad, it's like, no, man, it's that fucking pimp -ass jacket. And, like, the only reason that exists is because um, Tetsuya Nomura, the character designer for the game, wanted to flex on everybody. And you'll see in, like, early, um, like, you know, concept art for Squall, some of which will presumably be behind me right now. Like, Squall, he looked a bit more feminine in appearance. He had longer hair and softer features. And they told him, no, you can't have a main character. You need to make him, like, you know, a bit more manly. And what they did is they reused that design for, like, you know, spoilers for a 20-year-old game. Like, Squall's dad 
Laguna, and they gave him the long hair and the softer features. And I, I contend, like, you know, Laguna has got the best fucking theme in the, like, of any Final Fantasy game. Like, the man with the machine gun. But one of the other things Nomura got told about, you know, the early contact art he did of Squall was, ah, oh, I don't know about that jacket. Because we're not sure if, like, you know, the PlayStation will be able to render like realistic looking fur. Yeah, the PS1. Yeah, the PS1, like, we'll, we don't know if it can render a realistic, like, you know, looking fur collar. So do you know what Nomura's response to that was? What? He made the fur collar bigger. <laughs> Like, purely just to see if they could do it. And, like, you know, according to, like, you know, industry legend, they did. And when they did it, he kept saying, make it bigger, make it bigger. <laughs> and I like that element of Squall's design, because not only is it boss as fuck, it's reminiscent of a lion's mane. And obviously he's called Squall, Leon Heart, Lion Heart. And his favourite creature is Griever, which is, like, you know, it's the weird lion monster. And I'll still not forget when I was playing, like, Final Fantasy VIII uh, with one of my ex-girlfriends. And uh, the time got to name Griever, and she named it Lionel. And I was like, fucking on the money right there. And in every subsequent game that Squall's appeared in, they always make that rough bigger and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> now I'd like to think they're just continuing that in the vein of flexing on the rest of the industry. That told them, you can't render a realistic looking fur collar. I'm like, no, fuck you. We can, and we're going to do it. They did it, and like it's so pimp that it overshadows the fact that the character is wielding a gun with a sword strapped to it. So Lucas, Final Fantasy VIII, you said you think it's better than seven. Do you want to like, you know, clarify that before like, you know, the internet mobs come and get you? I mean, I think they've already come. They've already <laughs> been here. <laughs> they've got you, you're already dead. No more, no more videos starring Lucas from this point on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think like, just to me, the characters and the world are so much more intriguing in Final Fantasy VIII. They are, yes. Also, it's just, I, it's in every single way, it's a step up from just like the graphics to the music. Uh, and the music is the bit of Final Fantasy VIII that like, you know, gives me the most nostalgia. And I will, on occasion, when I have like, you know, my gym playlist or whatever, like, just force your way, will come on like, oh, this song is so good! And like Man with the Machine Gun and stuff like that. And then I still, to this day, flip between is Final Fantasy VIII or Final Fantasy X my favourite. And like, so I replay Final Fantasy X every single year, but... I like, you know, I just have more nostalgia for Final Fantasy VIII because I remember that back in the day, uh, my cousin lent me the game, but he only lent me the first disc. Oh no! <laughs> because I didn't know games had more than one disc. So I played that first disc to completion like 10, 15 times because I just thought that was the end of the game. I thought the end of the game is just Squall getting hit by that, like, you know, ice through the chest and dying. <laughs> And I thought that's how the game ended. It says insert disc two. And I'm like, well, there is no disc two. Maybe they mean like, you know, Final Fantasy VIII 2. So then I'd replay the game again. So like my version of that game is like Squall dies at the end of it every single time. And have you got any stories like that of like back in the day before you just knew they're like making mistakes similar to that? Uh, I don't really think so from memory, but I do remember like Final Fantasy VIII to clarify, maybe the reason why I prefer over seven as well is because it was my first one. Ah, okay. You always remember your first, don't you? So they say. You do. I'm presuming they talk um, about Final Fantasy games when they say that. <laughs> and I just remember one day, like, I didn't know what this game was, but my dad just came up to me and went, here's a new game for the PlayStation. Why has it got four discs? Like, what is this? Well, I think I didn't have that moment. Because I said, like, oh, that is one disc. <laughs> well, that opening cutscene still blew my fucking mind. I'm like, oh my God. Like... I think that was the first time, and I've had it happen like only sparingly since then, of games will never look better than this. And the next time it happened to me was like a solid 10 years later when I was playing um, Fight Night Round 3 for the Xbox 360. <laughs> and our mutual friend likes telling me a story because it makes me look like an idiot where he started the game and my boxer was just getting punched in the face for about five minutes straight as I was waiting for the cutscene to end. <laughs> because I didn't think, oh, I thought, oh well, this is the cutscene because there's no way the actual game looks this good. Yeah. And just watch my boxer get the shit kicked out of him. Like, when do I actually start playing? Like, the game's going now. Like, oh my god, I'm playing a cutscene. <laughs> and then the next time it happened was Red Dead 2. When I went into like the photo mode for Red Dead 2 and I zoomed in on a squirrel, and it had a fuzzy nut sack. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Games, and then I said to myself, games will never get better than this. <laughs> <laughs> 